The lip launches have been out of control. If you know a thing or two about me, then you know that I have a passion for fashion. No, I actually don't. I don't know anything about fashion, but I do have a passion for lip products and there have been so many new lip product launches over the past couple months. And I also feel like every single one of those launches has gone viral, which just makes me want to try everything even more. And I feel like I can't be the only one out there who's really curious about all these new lip launches and want to know whether or not they're actually worth that viral status and how they compare to one another. So I figured I would just throw together a giant deep dive review on all of these lip product launches, show you what, hello? I was gonna say share my thoughts and show you swatches at the exact same time. We'll basically just take a very in-depth, detailed look at all of these lip launches together and talk through things like ingredients, if there are any worth mentioning, look, feel, the shine, I'm a sucker for nice shine, level of pigment. Of course, I am going to swatch every single shade for you on my lips so you can really get a feel for how they look. And I do have multiple shades in several of these products. So if you like a lip swatch, you've clicked on the right video. Uh, what was that point for? I don't, I don't know. Let's just jump into it. All right, let's start off with a launch that really inspired this video in the first place, the new Charlotte Tilbury Beauty Icons lipsticks. These are actually the only lipsticks in this entire video. Everything else is some sort of oil or gloss or butter or balm. I don't really wear lipsticks anymore, but I was so drawn to these. I couldn't help myself. I had to buy. The Beauty Icons lipsticks are highly pigmented lipsticks described to have a satin shine finish. I wouldn't say that these are fully shiny on my lips in the way that a lip gloss is, but they definitely do look very satiny. And that satiny finish is kind of deceiving because I feel like it looks like it would be really creamy and moisturizing, but I actually don't find it to be either of those things. This is a pretty thin lipstick formula, and while I don't think it's uncomfortable, it's also not really nourishing on my lips at all. However, the plus side to this being thinner is that it really stays put on the lips and has nice long wear. All right, time for some swatches. Let's talk about each of the four pinkish shades. First up is red carpet pink, which is described as a cool, bright pastel pink. I feel like I would be obsessed with this if it wasn't quite as bright. Something about that extra vivid, ultra saturated, fully pigmented lip isn't super flattering on my fair skin in my opinion, but I can still appreciate the fact that this is a beautiful pink lipstick. Candy Chic is described as a warm candy pink that I think swatches a lot warmer in the photos online than it actually does in person. I feel like I tend to have that issue with Charlotte Tilbury lip products where a product will look a certain way in the swatches online, but in person, I feel like it looks a lot different. Nonetheless, this is a really fun, bright pop of pink that I would have died for back in like 2017, but it's just a little bit too much for my personal preference now. Rose to Fame is described as a cool mauve rose pink and at first I was like how the heck can something be mauve and rose at the same time but I get it because this is. This shade is absolutely stunning. If you're somebody that likes the idea of a berry lipstick but you feel like you have a hard time finding one that looks really flattering on you, give this a try because the way that this meshes cool and warm with the mauve and rose together makes this something that I think would be so flattering on so many different skin tones. Swatched out to completely full pigment. This is too deep for me, but if I kind of blot it out and shear it out and then put a clear gloss on top, oh my goodness, it's beautiful. Icon Nude is what I wanted the original Pillow Talk shade to be. Like based on all of these photos I kept seeing of Victoria's Secret models wearing Pillow Talk, I thought that when I bought it, it was going to look something like Icon Nude in person. But on me, without a tan, Pillow Talk pulls very warm and I just don't like the look of it. Icon Nude, on the other hand, is something that I really like on my fair skin. This is described as a warm nude baby pink that again, I think looks much warmer in the swatches online than it actually does in person. And especially compared to how it actually looks swatched on me. On me, this is like the perfect, slightly rosy nude pink. Will I actually reach for these? Probably not very much if I'm being totally honest. Cause like I was saying earlier, I just don't really reach for lipsticks anymore. I never buy them anymore. I just kind of wanted to for nostalgic reasons. I thought that the shades looked so pretty and there's just like something therapeutic to me about trying new lipstick as dorky as that sounds So I know that a lot of you are also more into my kind of lip preference these days Which is something that's more sheer and glossy Which is what the rest of these products are going to be but in case any of you wanted to see all of these colors swatched out 
I thought I'd include them. Let's move on to the new Summer Fridays Dream Lip Oils. These are supposed to be plush lip oils that glide on like a dream, deliver a high shine tint, and provide deep hydration. Sounds amazing in theory. These lip oils contain a lot of different lip oils that will be really softening and nourishing for the lips like castor, rosehip, shea, avocado, apricot, jojoba, grapeseed, raspberry, and squalane. When I think about the kinds of lip products that I'm obsessed with, like the Amicole lip oils and the Lawless Beauty glosses that are very thick and a little bit tacky, this Summer Fridays lip oil is definitely thinner compared to those. Like I can actually feel that this is a lip oil versus some of the other things that I feel like are called lip oils these days, but don't actually feel like oil on the lips, which isn't a bad thing because I tend to like those kinds of products better. This is one of those where like, I can tell there's oil in it, but it's not too thin and oily. Like if I'm trying to think about the thinnest lip oil that I've ever tried, it's probably the Merit lip oils. Those are very thin and truly just feel like oil. This is a little bit more plush than that, a little bit more thick than that, but not as much as something like Amicole or Lawless. Why am I holding this in like every different direction? So they're definitely very comfortable. And on Sephora's website, they're described as having sheer coverage with a high shine finish, but I actually find these to be quite pigmented. And these definitely have a very nice shiny finish, but I wouldn't quite consider them to be high, high shine. When something is high shine for me, that means that it's like wet, drippy, glassy looking on the lips, which I know is not everybody's preference. So that's not a bad thing that these are not wet and drippy looking. I still think they're beautiful. And I want to make sure that I'm talking about any potential smell, burning, tingling, plumping. I feel like a lot of the times the smell and the plumping effect can go hand in hand, but not always. Like for example, if it's cinnamon or peppermint, these don't really have any apparent smell to me, but they do tingle on my lips a bit. For me, it's not so intense that I wouldn't want to reach for it. But again, I just want to make sure I'm calling those things out. Shades, swatches, receipts, proof, timeline. Screenshots. Let's do it. Pink Cloud is the lightest option available and it's a light but bright warm pink. Soft Mauve is a medium toned true mauve and that it actually has a cool undertone. And compared to some of the mauve tones that we just saw with Charlotte Tilbury, this is definitely much softer and subtler, which I prefer. And the last shade that I have is Blush Dreams, which I would consider to be a medium rose. So overall, I would say that this is a really solid launch from Summer Fridays. I feel like a lot of you will really enjoy these, especially if you're someone that doesn't want a lip product that's super thick and plush and cushy like I do. But because these are not that, these are not going to replace any of my favorite lip products. Definitely not like a top five kind of product for me, but a solid launch nonetheless. So let's move on to the House Labs, what are these called? PhD Hybrid Lip Glazes. So this launch seems to be more focused on skincare than some of their other lip products. They say it's a skincare infused glaze. It's supposed to hydrate, plump without burning. Oh, but after two weeks of continuous use. So not like an immediate plumper, but something that is supposed to have ingredients that help to plump if you use it repeatedly and just be restoring overall. That's what they say about this. We'll see. So aside from having prickly pear oil and squalane, there are a variety of peptides in this product. And the two in particular that are supposed to offer that plumping effect are maxi what? Sometimes my voice just decides to stop voicing. Maxi Lip and Volulip. I struggle to find the words to describe the texture of this product because it's very unique. Like it's not too thin and it's not too thick. It doesn't have the slip and slide of an oil, but it's not super thick and occlusive either. It's not melty. It's not super slippery or liquidy. What is it? I feel like I would just say that this is a slightly tacky gel that feels very smooth to apply, like ultra smooth. This just glides over my lips, glides just like a layer on top of them. But in saying that, I don't really feel like this like sinks in and makes my lips feel super conditioned. I feel like there has to be the perfect balance between those two things, like something sitting on top of my lips and forming that film, but then also providing me a conditioning effect. It's kind of like, what's going on with my hair? I feel like the perfect lip product for me is something that perfectly balances those two things, like glides on, gives you a layer of just like juicy beautifulness, but also then feels like it's sinking in 
and offering moisture and conditioning and nourishing, you know? But I still really enjoy the way that these feel and I also really love the way that they look. They have a light amount of pigment. They have really nice shine that's not overly intense and they have some gorgeous shades, if I do say so myself. Okay, I know it's pronounced macaron, but I just, like, I have to say macaron. Is that really bad and cringy? Uh, macaron rune is a light, cool pink that is stunning. If you know me and my preference for lip shades, you know that this, this is my kind of thing. And I really like the depth of this color. It's not too light. It's not too dark for a pasty like me. It's just right. Next we have guava, which is a brown based pink with a slightly warm undertone. Praline is a deep beige with a neutral undertone. Cocoa is a dark cool toned brown with a very purple undertone. Persimmon is a really beautiful dark reddish brown. And fig is a warm deep brown. Two downsides to the product for me. Number one, I don't love the packaging. I think that the wand on the applicator is just too short and then the actual doe foot itself is really small. Like this just makes me feel like I'm using a mini. And this is also not long wear for me. I feel like I can just kind of feel this like shrinking on my lips the more that I wear it when I'm not even wearing it for a super long time, which is a bummer because again, I really like the way that this feels. For me, I feel like I enjoy it enough to want to continue to reach for it and reapply it more often than maybe some of my other favorite lip products, but wanted to make sure I let you guys know. I can't consider this to be long wear. I just can't. Next is the Summer Fridays Lip Butter Balm in Birthday Cake. <sighs> oh, that's good. Wait, I forgot to mention Smell for House. That's right, there isn't one. The Summer Fridays Lip Butter Balm contains shea butter, muramuro seed butter, and hyaluronic acid, and I would consider this to definitely be a little bit of a thinner balm, not super, super thin, but not something I would consider to be thick. So thinner, slightly tacky, and with a subtle amount of shine, definitely not super shiny. The birthday cake flavor is apparently limited edition. We'll see if they actually end up getting rid of this for good or bring it back. This is a sheer light frosty pink with silver shimmer and an unreal smell slash taste. I'm gonna put some on. Compared to something like the House Glaze, I do feel like this actually conditions my lips. Like it doesn't do the best job at creating that nice like smoothing layer, but it conditions more than House. Not like something like Vaseline by any means, but I do, I do get more with this. All right, stop. Lasting power here is, I would say, average for a balm. Not super fast fading, but not super long lasting either. So overall, again, I think that this is a solid lunch for summer Fridays. For me personally, I don't really feel like this adds anything to my collection other than the smell, which is honestly the only reason I'm keeping it. Birthday cake is the best ever. Otherwise, I feel like I already have several light pinks and I have textures that I prefer more or other things that are not tinted that are more moisturizing on my lips, so. But what can I say? I am a sucker for birthday cake. All right, this is the last launch where I have multiple shades to swatch. After that, we have three more products and they're all just one, what? I only have one shade of each of those, gosh. This is the Tower 28 Lip Softy, which I was so excited to try because how cute and amazing does that sound? This is supposed to give you the hydration of a lip mask with a sweet sheer tint for instant cover. Co no. Comfort and smooth, softy lips. Like again, that sounds perfect. These lip softies contain soybean oil, jojoba oil, shea butter, castor oil, and coconut oil. And I have a big, big problem with them. So they actually have four tinted shades that I'll swatch for you guys, but one that is untinted. This feels completely different than the tinted shades. Oh, no, that's one of the tinted ones. This. This is something that leans thin, but is not too thin. It's kind of like in between thin and thick and it does feel super soft on my lips. I feel like I would really enjoy reaching for this if I just wasn't in the mood for something thick. Cause even though I do love, love that, not all the time. Like the reason why I feel like I have a million lip treatments is because sometimes I want something that's like dense, plush, cushy. Other times I'm like, mm, not today. So this would be perfect for those days, but this does feel like it's burning on my lips. So for me, that like burning tingling effect offsets any moisturizing effect, which is a bummer. But the bigger bummer are these tinted shades. These are a mess. Every now and then I test something that makes me genuinely wonder if just nobody on the team actually tested out the final product. And not to be shady, but that's how I feel with this because what 
happened here. This product is so thin, so thin, grainy, not moisturizing at all, has an underwhelming amount of shine with patchy pigment. Like I like the fact that these are sheer and these shades are really pretty, but they're patchy. And I feel like you can actually see that in the pictures that they have online, like in this light shade, if you zoom in, like that is just patchy all over her lips. And these also have that tingling burning sensation. So even though I would not recommend these whatsoever, I'll still show you the swatches just in case you were curious. So the first shade is called Watermelon Kiwi. It is a sheer baby pink that smells like artificial watermelon. I hate it. I hate the smell of anything that is like extra sugary, artificially watermelon. Ugh. It's like this gif. That's that's me. Blood orange is a sheer red orange that I actually like the smell of. It does smell like blood orange to me. It kind of smells like orange Sour Patch Kids. I like it. Dolce de Leche is a sheer neutral brown that is kind of like a taupe. It does smell very sugary. It smells kind of like caramely. I couldn't tell you the last time I smelled Dolce de Leche, so I don't know if it actually smells like that. It smells very sugary and sweet. I like. And Ube Ube, not sure, vanilla is a sheer burgundy that smells like sweet vanilla. That's my favorite one. Are you surprised? So dang, I'm genuinely confused by this one. Maybe it's a type of thing where they have inconsistencies in manufacturing and there are certain batches that just like were bad. That's the only thing I could think of that would make sense because otherwise, again, I'm like, how did this get approved? It beats me. Ooh, okay, I'm excited about this one. This is the new Ula Henriksen Pout Preserve Peptide Lip Treatment. I have the original of this, which is untinted. If you have ever tried it, then you will know that that one smells intensely of orange dreamsicle. Is it dreamsicle, creamsicle, or both? I don't know, either one like that. I think it smells so good, but it's very intense. So I have to be in the mood for it. And if I'm not, then I don't want to reach for it, but I love how it feels. So I was really excited to see that they launched three new flavors and shades as well. I don't know why that was so hard for me to think of. These lip treatments contain cloudberry seed oil, cocoa butter, mango butter, and peptides. And they are thick, thick, thick but in a good way. Like the kind of thick that is cushy and melty and a little bit gloopy. This is just plush. It's tacky, but it's plush. You're tacky and I hate you. Okay, you see me after class. Tacky in the way that it feels, not like cheap tacky. And unlike the Tower 28 Lip Softy, this is tingly, but not so tingly that it offsets the moisturizing effect. This still feels incredibly nourishing on my lips. The shade that I picked up is Strawberry sh 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 <laughs> Strawberry Sorbet, which is a sheer medium toned warm pink. It does have a delicious strawberry smell, but similar to the original, it is pretty potent. So if you're someone that's like, oh, I like, you know, a subtle fragrance in my lip product, but I don't love it if it's really intense, don't buy this. But I like it. This is something that I would consider to have longer wear. I can't help it. What's wrong with me? This is going to be dripping down my face. I need to make sure I'm okay. Wow. Shockingly, we're not trippy. This is just so good. Like this is my kind of lip product. I love it. Love, love, love. This is what I'm talking about. This is my kind of lip product. I love it. I want more of these. I want more shades. I feel like the other two shades, if I'm remembering correctly, were just like too dark, not things that I think would look great on me. I just want a bunch of like pinks and mauves and nudes, please. And just make them all birthday cake scented if you feel like it. Second to last, we have a new launch from Tarte. They are at it again with the Miracuji. Miracuji. Oh my God. Oh no. I gotta wrap this up. Miracuja Juicy Lip Product Collection assortment that they have. This time, it's a lip vinyl. They have so many different versions of this Maracuja lip that I cannot keep them straight anymore. Some are plumping, some are not plumping, some are a balm, some are pH adjusting, some are conditioning and shiny, and some are just shiny. This one is supposed to be for those of us that want high shine or shimmer, because they are launching this in a shimmer finish. I think maybe like today as we speak, as I'm filming this. So for those that want intense shine and sheer or full coverage, this contains grapeseed oil, tons of fruit extracts, hyaluronic acid, and maracuja. And this is an extra thick, melty, sticky gloss. Like, can you hear this? Is this gonna be ASMR? I don't know if my mic's gonna pick that up. So it is the most comparable to the Ula Henriksen lip treatment in the fact that it's really thick and it's melty, but I think that this one is stickier and obviously this is stiffer because it's in this kind of a format and not a squeeze tube. <gasps> oh no, did I drip? No. Oh, hello? They were not 
lying about the shine of this. This is by far the shiniest lip product in this entire video. This looks wet and drippy, like you just were, I don't know, eating a popsicle, and then after you have that like juice on your lips. I don't know why I love that so much because that doesn't really sound super flattering. Honestly, it's probably not, but I love it. I can't help it. The shade that I picked up is Sheer Lotus, which they describe as a bright poppy pink. It's definitely bright. I feel like this is like a cool toned raspberry pink. And I agree that this is versatile in terms of coverage. With just one swipe, it's sheer. You definitely don't get that ultra high shine finish with one swipe. Still very shiny, but not as wet as it looks if you build it. If you build it, you get the high, high shine, but then you get fuller pigment. This shade is definitely just too vivid and too intense for me with fair skin. I'm curious to see how it looks when I have a tan on. I wouldn't have purchased this one. There are some others that I think look more wearable, but this was the only option that they had in Sephora, so I wanted to grab it for the video. And this is not one of their plumping options, so it doesn't have like a minty or cinnamony smell, but this to me oddly smells like plastic and flowers combined. Like fake plastic flowers that smell like real flowers. Mm. And while it's not as potent as the Ulla Henriksen lip treatments, it does still kind of linger, and that's like a weird thing to be tasting. Uh, last but not least, the most viral product in this entire video for sure, the products that people were eating. On TikTok, we have the Milk Makeup Cooling Jelly Water, no, Cooling Water Jelly Tint. This has aloe, niacinamide, and some plant extracts in it. I was actually expecting it to have nothing since it's a tint, but I was like, ooh, a little bit of hydration there. And the texture of this, is so weird. This is bizarre because when you look at it up close, it looks like this would feel like a very bouncy jelly and like it does when you touch it, it does, but not when I'm swiping this across my lips. The first time you apply this, be warned, there's like water that comes to the surface of it. So it just feels completely wet. But after that first application, it's not wet like that every single time. When I'm putting this on my lips, again, it doesn't feel jelly-like to me. I think it feels stiff, but it's slick. Like it slides right across my lips. It is water light in weight. Like there's no weight to this product. It's traceless, but it feels very cooling. and not in like a minty, plumpy, plumpy, plumpery, whatever, you get what I'm saying. Not in that kind of way, in like a cold cooling way. It does feel very nice. The shade that I picked up was again, the only shade they had in stores. I actually went to one mall and they had the corally orange one. And I was like, I don't wanna buy that because I know I will never wear it. So I went to a different mall and they had this one, which is Burst. This is also listed as a poppy pink, and I would also describe it as a bright, cool-toned raspberry pink. When I swatch this side-by-side -side with Tarte, I do think that they're very similar. This one just pulls a little bit more purple in undertone, so I think it looks a bit more fuchsia. <sighs> Be so careful applying this. Be careful, buyer beware. This is very buildable, and sometimes not in a good way. Like if you accidentally apply a little bit too much, it's bright, it's intense, and it's not budging because obviously this is a stain. So it's something you definitely wanna just like start off with a little bit of and then build if you would like to, but don't go in with a heavy hand or you're gonna be like, what have I done? I don't love this. I love the fact that this truly does stain and last a very long time, but because of the way that this applicator is shaped, I mean, I do appreciate the fact that you can use this both on the cheeks and lips, but since this is a lip video, like for the purpose of lips, I feel like this just is not ideal for a stain. I prefer a stain to have a doe foot so I can get really nice even non-patchy coverage with that pigment. This, I feel like just because of everything about it, it does end up looking a little bit patchy on me. So I don't know, I think I'll keep playing around with it and see if there are like certain ways that I can get this to look more even. I'll keep you posted and I'll probably include this in my eventual lip stain showdown. So I'll give you my updated thoughts there. But for now, if you're really into lip stains, I don't think you need to run out and buy this. I don't. All right, you guys, those are all of the lip launches I wanted to dive into for today's video. I would really love to hear your thoughts on whether or not you want me to do more videos like this where I'm not reviewing just like every new product launch across all different categories in one video, but where I take one specific category, like today we did lips, and talk about all the new launches that are really, really hype.
hyped up in that one category. I personally feel like that's more helpful because it helps me to figure out like, okay, which of these new things do I really want compared to all the other new things in that category, you know? But like, maybe that's just me and maybe I won't ever do a video like this again. So let me know in the comments if you're interested in picking up any of these lip products. As always, you gotta let me know what product that is and everything is going to be listed and linked in the description box in order of mention. Before you go, please don't forget to give this a thumbs up, subscribe, click on that notification bell and send my channel to a friend. Thank you so much for your support in doing those things. It means the world. Thank you for watching my videos. I love the freaking heck out of you guys. Make sure to stay tuned for my next one because that will be up in a few days. And until then, but until then, what do I normally say until then? I hope you have a great few days. Ooh.